Hello, and thank you for joining us again. Today, we're gonna to talk about production management and configuration. Last time we talked about creating work tickets, and there are a lot of options involved that affect how the work tickets are created. So let's go ahead and take a look at our agenda. So we're gonna talk about production management options. So let's go ahead and get started with production management options. So here we are in Sage 100. I'll go ahead and go into production management and under setup, we'll open up production management options. As you can see, there are several tabs involved with the options here, but there's not that many options to go through. So the first question is the default materials budget cost. So as we create work tickets, there's a budget associated with the material that is planning to be issued to the work ticket. To establish that budget, we have to look at the inventory item and see what cost is going to be used. And we have three options. We can use the item's last cost, the item's standard cost, or the item's average cost. Now understand this is just for budgetary purposes only. The actual cost will be based on the item's valuation method and may be different than any of these three. So you'll just need to pick the one that you think is best suited for you. Most of the time we choose the last cost. That seems to be one that may be the closest to the actual cost. The next section is to integrate with the various modules. So accounts payable, purchase order, bill of materials, and payroll. Now for payroll, there's actually three different kinds of integrations. So we can say, yes, we wanna integrate with payroll. If we say that, we can post time and have it update the payroll module. And I'm talking specifically about Sage 100 payroll here. Or we can say no. And if we say no, we would maintain our employees and their pay rates and those kinds of things only in production management. But the third option is employees only, which means instead of having to maintain the employees and departments and those things in production management, we can read the payroll file for those pieces of information, but the rates would be used out of production management. So I can demonstrate later how to set up the employees. We'll go ahead and say, no, we're not gonna integrate with payroll. Now down below, we have a section where you can change the terminology of various places within production management. For example, we call the item that we create a work ticket in production management but you certainly have the option of changing that description to maybe work order, if that's what you would prefer, and on down the line. Our current fiscal year is 2020. Our current period is period five. Option to post materials uses to general ledger in detail or in summary, post work and process and cost reconciliation in detail or summary, post labor entries to the general ledger in detail or summary, and an option to capture description of work performed. So when we're entering time into production management, we have an option to capture the description of the work. Let's go to the entry tab. We do have the capability of doing batch entry for transactions and labor. We can specify a default warehouse for the parent item, the item that's being produced or the finished good, or we can specify to use the item's default warehouse as the finished good warehouse. Same thing for the components, it can be a specified warehouse or we can look at the item in inventory management and see what its default warehouse is and use that instead. We can include open work ticket materials as inventory demand. This has to do with the IRP or inventory requirements planning module we'll talk about at some other time. Our default make to stock work ticket class is STK short for stock. We'll talk about that in a moment. We have an option to explode sub-assemblies. So when we're entering the work ticket, if there are sub-assemblies, they will explode into their component items instead of taking the finished goods of the sub-assemblies out of inventory. We can auto-issue labor and materials, or we can back flush labor and materials. So auto-issue refers to when the work ticket is released. And back flush refers to when the work ticket is being closed or completion entries are done. So we can have any labor that's associated with the work ticket, any material that's associated with the work ticket automatically be posted to the work ticket when we release it. That's auto issue, or we can have it post when we're doing completion entries. 
but we can also limit the auto issue of the material to only the material that's on hand. So we don't go into negative quantities for the items that we're issuing to the work ticket. As such, there's an auto issue material shortage report that will tell you which items were short. And you have a couple of options on how you wanna sort that report. Now, cost completion method refers to when we do partial completions, what kind of cost are we gonna to post to the item? And we can post the actual cost, the budget cost, or the standard cost. The standard cost is the standard cost of the item as defined in inventory. The actual cost would be all the work and process that's been accumulated and allocated to the item as it's being finished into inventory. Or the budgeted cost would be, as it explains, whatever the budget is as we do these partial completions. But this fourth option is the lower of budget or actual, which frankly ends up being the most commonly used option here. What it will do in this case is look at each of the steps on the work ticket and if the actual cost is lower than the budgeted cost for that step, it'll use the actual. If the budgeted cost is lower on that step, it will use the budget. And then it will go through each of the steps, add up all those costs, and that will be the cost that will go into inventory. This gives you a way to control those costs to a certain degree as your production is going through its process. The, the challenge here always is, how the costs are accumulated. If the costs are accumulated at the front end of the process, but the completion is done at the back end of the process, then you can have a great disparity between the first items being produced cost and the last items being produced cost. Lastly, we have an option to auto release the work ticket. So when this is not checked, when you create the work ticket, the status of the work ticket is open and will remain open until you manually go into the work ticket and change its status to released. If this is checked, as soon as you create the work ticket and accept it, it will change the status automatically from open to released. Let's go to the forms tab. There's also an option to print the work ticket when you release it. Doesn't matter if it's released manually or automatically, there's an option to print the work ticket when it gets released automatically. So once again, if you hit accept and it changes the status to released, it would then automatically print the work ticket. And then some options on how the material is printed on the work ticket, whether the material is printed mixed in with the steps or separately, those kinds of things. Picking sheets, options, you've seen these things in sales order, same kind of options we have in production management. Printing tab, there's a couple of reports here, some reports that you can decide that you wanna print. There's missing cost reports and back order fill reports. And you can decide whether you wanna print them after you do completion entries or after you do close entries. I recommend you print these reports right after you do the completion, but print them before you do the close to make sure that all of your costs have been posted to the work ticket. Option to redisplay the documents. This is standard stuff, similar to sales order, purchase order, those kinds of things. Okay, the labor entry. So this only refers to time entry. There's an option to capture start times and stop times as you're doing the labor entry if this is set to yes. If set to no, it's not going to capture the start and stop times, but you will just enter the elapsed time. So if they end up working on this work ticket for this particular step for 20 minutes, you would enter in 20 minutes, or entered in decimals of hours, not in minutes, but enter in 0.5 hours, for example. But you don't have to say we started at 11 and stopped at 11.30 to calculate that. You can have it round or have a minimum amount of hours here so that it wouldn't be one minute, it would round up to five minutes or whatever you wanna do here. Allow regular entry to close work tickets. So if the work ticket has been closed in production management, you can still post labor costs to it. Obviously those costs would not end up in the finished good, but you could have a record of the labor being posted to the work ticket. Dynamic labor. So production management has this concept of dynamic inventory. 
also has a concept of dynamic labor, which means the costs are issued to the work ticket immediately upon the data entry. They do not wait until a register has been updated. So you can do that with labor transactions. So once you enter in the labor transaction and accept it, the work ticket is automatically updated with those costs. So we've gone through production management options. A lot of these are pretty simple to set up. Thank you for your time today. If you want to find us, you can find us on YouTube. LinkedIn. Our website is www.nimsassociates.com. Please check there for additional webinars that are coming up. And you can contact us at erp at nimsassociates.com or dial 877-454-3200, extension 6346. Thank you for your attention. We really appreciate it.